Hello and welcome to this guide to Backdrop Designer. Now when you download the Backdrop Designer app you'll see this and I just want to right click and uh, unzip. So I use 7-zip and to unzip to same folder or extract. So you go in here and basically you have Backdrop Designer, double click and it will load up. So when you first load it, it's going to ask you where do you keep your custom brushes. Now for me, I keep them inside my Backdrop Designer folder, custom brushes. Uh, so this is where a lot of the brushes that I've made before. There's this important file from previous versions that, are, that will sort out these brushes that I've created. Any brushes I want to keep, I uh, throw into this process folder for later. So I just want to leave this little underscore here, don't delete anything, just make sure you go inside the folder and click save. That way it's going to load up any previous brushes that you've used before, for example, some of these ones. Okay, so when you look at this UI, you might kind of faint because there's quite a lot going on here. So I'll kind of explain everything. File menu, open and save your backdrop files. Uh, export your image or your layers. Um, this exports uh, the the gradient background as a separate image when you do the export layers function. Um, export image will either show the background or not based on this little checkbox. Okay, so you can press I to toggle that. That way if you save something uh, that you've created uh, you can save it with transparency, good for sprites and objects and things like that you might make. Um, so you can reset, control and backspace, this is handy for if you have made a bunch of stuff, so control and backspace is going to get rid of all those plots. Now in some cases you might want to keep the very first plot, so for that it's shift and backspace, uh, that will keep the first plot, right? So Every time you click down, that's considered a plot, and there's something called plot memory. You can see that's been used up, All right? And when that gets to 100%, it's going to merge all your layers, similar to this button here. All right, so you merge everything down. It basically turns all of this into a single brush. It finds the next available slot inside your sets, in this case, set eight, and it creates this little merged image. It also plots that here in your bottom layer. So it basically combines all of your plots into one brush and makes a new brush from it. Um, so you might need that in the future if you go ahead and save your, your file. It's going to need that merged brush as a reference and it actually saves it locally inside that custom brushes folder we set up at the start. So just a control backspace. Right, so there's also the clear custom files menu. It's going to get rid of anything that I've loaded, any merged files. So any any files that I've made before may have dependencies on any of these new brushes. So I just have to be, be careful. Now, if I do want to keep something, all I want to do is go to the custom brushes folder. So I'll go to the custom brushes. Let's see if I want to keep something I've got like some processed images I made before here. If I want to keep something, let's say I'm, I want to keep this tree. So I'll drag that into processed or copy it if I still want to use it. So I'll just copy it because I always clear it from Backdrop Designer. So I'll paste that there. Um, what else is good? These daisies maybe. This, uh, this is loaded from a pack that's supplied. This branch looks pretty cool. So I'll put that in there. That could be useful later. Um, this little round ball I'm not too fussed about. Definitely my little stamp. I want to keep that for later as well, right? So <laughs> you can see there's some other files here that I've loaded. Uh, and if you look at this brush sort list, it basically has references to all of these. There's the daisy bunch, so the file name. And these are to do with the, the set number and the set location. So daisy bunch 70 
if you look inside here, you'll see set seven. Uh, sorry, this is actually set eight because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there you go. Number slot zero is the Daisy Bunch. So you kind of have to subtract one from the set. So instead of set eight, it's seven, and instead of one, it's zero. So seven zero, and then Daisy's grounded. So there we go, and you can see that's the there's a capture there as well that it uses as a merge thing so you can see they're all here like captured merged these are all references that it's going to use but if you want to clear these off and i'm going to do that now um just go to edit clear custom files and that is now freed up everything in set eight now you do have user one two three and four also free but i've filled up Set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with brushes. To make up to select a brush, just click on it. You can see a little preview down the bottom here, what you're gonna get, and then you click on it, then it comes up here. There's also a little copy of it down here for some other things. Right, so what else? We've got the UI panel style. So there's three different UIs, nice brown one, maybe you want to sort of color pick these so that everything looks nice and muted like that and it's just maybe a nicer background uh, go to the previous one you know just a nicer way to work and then a dark one you can you can pick the colors if you want but you can also make your own colors right let's see flip all horizontally so yeah if I did have some shapes like this I can flip all horizontally and put some here like that, flip all horizontally. And that just is a nice way of previewing everything that actually does flip everything uh, for real. So when you undo or redo, it actually flips it. And if you did plot fetching, it just fetches the brush, doesn't flip. I didn't like that. So anyway, that's another thing I'll look at in a second. Uh, randomized coloring is gonna look at every plot that you've made and simply just give you random colors why you would want that not really sure just a, it's an experimental feature inside info some information if you hover over it actually gives you information up the, the top here if you look where it says scale and plot rotation like that's just some extra information right but if you go up here and hover over about it says when it was created and some thanks, uh, some version changes, uh, which I've not really updated the version change information. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a help panel. If you click on that, you get some information about shortcut keys. Um, most of these look still to be the same. Uh, okay. Yeah, most, most of these look the same. Right, but there is buttons for these as well in some cases. And help panel with the itch site, I'll take you to the itch site, uh, YouTube playlist, and some credits. So there's also a few extra credits there to people that helped. Right, so that done. Uh, if you left click any of these, it's going to grab them. Right, so these are like little presets that you might like little sky ones let's just do control backspace or file reset all right and resets going to clear all the the plots that you've made right so you can left click to recall some of these right and maybe you want to make an adjustment let's make that and then click on this color make more like that and if you want to keep that you have to right click so you see that's now stored if you want to reset that little slot middle click right you do need a three button mouse for this uh, there's a few middle clicks here and there um, so if I want to call that one back just left click and same with these for the brushes so if I got a, a brush let's see there's a branch there okay so there's my branch and if I click this one you see it's brown if I click this one it's now blue um, Okay, so that's really those, and same deal with these. Now, if you click a brush down 
and you want to change the color of the last brush you put down, you just click on, um, so you can choose a color and then click update, right? So that basically sends all this information to that brush. You can also click on Alt O update, which is more like a toggle. And that means anytime you change something, it's going to immediately affect the last brush. So you can try all sorts of things here. You can see what happens if you take the, the black tones out. Now, the black tones, the blue tones, the red and the green tones, they come from the original brush's color, right? If I turn this slider down, that's the original brush's color. You see how there's black, blue and greens and reds and stuff? Well, that's like the tone system that this software likes to use. You don't have to use it but it will it's better for like swapping those colors out right so if i take away all the blacks you can see all the black disappears all the blue can make all the blue disappear don't know why that's not working um the red ah in fact you have to slide that one up don't we um make all the blues the reds disappear and the greens disappear so you do need this slider to actually be turned up for this to take effect right so make all the black now we're just left with the, the things that wear that colour of blue, right? And it's working now. I don't know what happened there, but it's working now. Um, so if I turn these on, you can see what's going on here. Right, so I can make them fade. Now, what if I didn't want to make them completely um, fade out? Right, I just want to remove the tones, but I just keep that up, or I can bring this up to solid mode. Right, they're more or less the same thing. Right, whether you see the base colors or not, they're more or less doing exactly the same thing. Right. Um, cool. Uh, these little locks basically say that you don't want them to change when you're using auto random. So if I click random amount. You see how that one's locked? So I can lock that to nothing, random amount, and what I'll get is I'll get all these variations and whether I see these or not. And that's handy for different texturing and you know you want to layer things up. And if you want it, like every time you click to do something random, you can click auto random, right? And anything that's locked won't change. But you see now when I click this, I'm getting all sorts of different tonal ranges. And this works really well with a cutout amount. If I bring the cutout amount up, you can see how I get all these different variations of the same brush, right? And I can lock certain ones, so I'll lock that there, right? And do that. So I'll just do control backspace to clear all that. So these are quite good. So random amount does a one-off. If they're locked, they won't change. You know, nothing's going to change even with random amount on. So I unlock all of these. You can see now I'm going to get now and again a solid base. So that's why it's good to lock that bottom one off, right? Because you don't always want a solid base. You just want something with texture. And this works with all your brushes, right? You click on anything here and you get variation from it. So that's good for like overlapping some texture stuff that you want. And you can change these colors at any point in time get something really nice so you can see how this start to build up now to rotate your brush e and r or if you come down here you can see a little preview of this rotates right but it's better to use e and r keys so e for edward r for robert and you can hold that down if you want fine tune rotation hold down shift and E or R and it will move slower. If you want five degree increments, hold down control and tap it, tap E or R and you'll get five degree in increments. You can actually see that uh, here, rotation 185. It also tells you up the top here, rotation. So you can see you can rotate that to any angle. If you want to flip it horizontally, press X. Right, you can also see that here. There's a little button that lets you flip it. You can flip it on Y. Z won't work um, in this case. Z doesn't do anything. It just assumes you're flipping Y. Um, it's used for something else. Okay, so control backspace all of that. It's starting to look a bit crazy. 
Um, so yeah, you can choose some of that. Let's make this color a bit more green. So I'm just going to do, hold down Alt and pick. So now I've got a bit more of a base green there. And see, I've got flip. Um, I've not got any random flip on, but I can click this random flip X. Right, but it's flipping the rotation as well. I'm going to turn off that flip rotation. This doesn't quite work as expected if you've got rotation on this already. So I'm just going to right click any of these to see if you right click it resets. Right. Now, you really need your brush to be horizontal in the first place. So in the first place, this brush is quite an upright one. Right, so what I could do is control backspace. Right, and let's say I did like that brush. I'm gonna bring it all back to original colors, turn off all random and reset everything, right? Let's bring that to zero. And now I wanna rotate this so it's horizontal and make it fairly big. Kinda of wanna make my own brush here, right? Let's actually put it that way. Right, and turn down the cutout amount. I want it to be kind of softer at the edges. Let's bring it up a bit, right? So I'll click that down. Oops, turn off the random flip X. Click that down. And then down here, there's a little brush called the capture brush, right? And I click that and I'm just gonna go over this. And I'm gonna call this my horizontal, horiz, I'll just call this horiz brush. Right, and it's captured it. It's already applied all this color information to it. But if I bring these down again, you see I've got an exact replica. But now it's its own brush. It's thrown it into the next available slot, which is this first slot of set eight. Okay, I usually keep set eight free for things like this. Um, and these are your kind of ones where you store your own brushes. So control backspace. So we've got this new brush from set eight, horizontal brush. Right, and I'm gonna pop that down, turn on auto update bring in the slider here, turn down any of the original black tones, and let's just mess around with these a bit. Let's bring in some cutout amount, some more. We've got this brush, right? Let's do, uh, turn, off, turn off auto update and do auto random. Now every time I click, I'm getting something quite random here. Now what I want is it for it to flip horizontally automatically, so I'll just do random flip X. You can see every time I click, it's gonna rotate. If I press Y, it's gonna flip vertically. That's maybe more what I want. And I'm gonna click on random scale. So random scale gives me a value of about 0.75 to 1.1 in terms of scale. So it's gonna be either be a bit bigger or a bit smaller. Right, so that with random flip X on, I get a lot of variation. I can, can start to make this kind of painterly looking ground up. So I'll just control backspace. I'm gonna use the mouse wheel or the bracket keys or shift and bracket key for fine tune or control and bracket key to go a big amount. Uh, or control mouse wheel or shift and mouse wheel or mouse wheel itself, right? That That's gonna scale this brush for you, right? So I'm gonna Start clicking down. Now, obviously doing a lot of clicks like this is gonna take a long time to build up what you want. So if you hold down shift, now bear in mind, holding down shift is just gonna like splat loads of these down. And I'm using up that memory quite quickly. So have a look at that memory number as I do this. It doesn't happen if, if unless you move, right? So if you stay still, it's actually quite good at preserving memory unless you actually move, but now I can kind of paint this ground in like that, right? And what I want is for this image to be continuous. So see up here, wrap mode, click that. That now takes the other half of the brush and draws it on the other side. And I end up with this repeatable image. That's what this preview is for, right? So as I click that, I get the other half and I can fill up that ground there. All good. Right, I've used up quite a lot of the plot memory. So maybe at this point I wanna just kind of merge what I've got, 
Now it will ignore the it, it will ignore the sky for you know obvious reasons. The sky can be changed later. So if I merge this, I'll just click merge, you'll see that so my plot memory is at 30%, my frame rate's gone right down because I've used up you know quite a lot of memory and every cycle the PC is uh, the computer's drawing all of these plots all the time. It's going to be a better system for this later, but this is just what it does right now. So if I merge everything, say yes. What get sometimes it, it looks slightly different. There's a tiny little pixel change here and there, but it's no big deal. But what I get is I get this merged file, and I get uh, I get my plot memory back, and everything goes to this single layer down here, right? And that's fine. That's all I need. So. That's the brush that's been plotted down. And this is the little brush that I made. So I could always like do more above that. So I'll go to layer one. And I just want to bring the tones up a bit. I just want to make these a wee bit lighter in each. And maybe a wee bit more yellow in that one. And flip that vertically. Scale it down. I'm going to press eight for a little bit more opacity there and let's actually bring out some of these tones. I'm just going to undo those. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice. So that's a little kind of stylized highlight. Right. So every time I click it's going to flip horizontally and got some nice little highlights there. It's very painterly style. Okay, so that's basically how that works. You can see in this layer down the bottom the preview of that and in a preview of the single merged brush. Now if I want to change the colors of these at any point in time I can click on the layer and click on preview right and it's previewing everything with these new colors right I'm just going to turn it off and it goes back right now I want to store these so I'm just going to right click store them in there right these tones so I'll click on preview and I'm going to left click and grab some of these different tones just to see what happens. That's quite nice, like a mud effect. And that's even nicer. Right, so I've got this nice mud effect. Now, if I was happy with these colors to be transferred to the brushes inside this layer, this layer, then let's click Bake. Right, now everything's brown in this layer. And there's no real way to get that back. Right, the only way to get it back is really to recall the colors used in there. So maybe if, if they were all using this setup, and I did a preview, I can kind of get something back, right? Can't get them back completely, right? Because it's kind of like a new color. So I'll just turn that off, quite like the brown. Let's go to layer one and click on preview. You see I've got these colors and the amounts as well. Like everything gets affected. The cutout amount, the blurriness, um, uh, you know, all the tones so I can See how it looks with different colors and make up something completely different. Right, if I'm not happy with it, just click preview again. But if I was happy with it, I click bake, right? I'm going to do that. So I'll click bake. So I've got all the plots in this layer changed to that color. So this works on the layers, right? Now, if I wanted to change color of an actual plot, well, Let's have a look. Let's get a, another branch here. Let's bring everything up. Let's just reset all of that stuff. Okay, let's turn down the cutout amount and we've got this here. Right, and I plotted it down. So let's say I want to change the colors of that. All I have to do, like before, is do the uh, auto update, left click, and I can change the colors of that brush. Okay, so I can turn off the random stuff here. I can always go a layer below. Now, let's see those last two brushes, see the, how they're in different layers. I want to move them up to somewhere else. So this one was the first one, that was the second one. So I'm going to do an undo, go to layer A and do Control Alt Z. Right, it's going to redo it in that layer. There's also redo in layer, that's the same thing. Okay, and let's see, there's another one in here, so I just need to undo, 
let's go to layer 7, control alt z for that one, layer 8, control alt z for that. Now I've put that in the wrong one, so I can just do a, a cut, go to layer 6, and a paste. Right, and let's now put that behind. These little white dots means there's something present in these layers, right? Even if I've not named them. To name a layer, just double click and you can give it some sort of name. Let's call it branch behind. And branch. Okay, so you can kind of name all your layers. To change the opacity of a layer, just middle, uh, sorry, right click and drag. You'll see this little bar. And if you go all the way to the right, that's it full opa oh, uh, opaque. And then all the way to the left, it's fully transparent. Okay, uh, so that's basically that. Uh, I don't know why everything's gone a bit weird to it. So we might be getting the optimizer on. So this optimizer actually makes some of the UI disappear. If you notice the frame rate, 58 frames per second, and I turn on the optimizer, you see I'm going kind to of jump up to 60, in some cases higher. So that will just stop some of the UI being displayed. Um, Okay, so that's that. That's most of the things about here. This is the sh whether the shader shows the new colors or the original colors and everything else. Though, yeah, if I click a plot down and do auto update, you can update with blurriness and things. Uh, so, sorry, that's auto random auto update. We can add blurriness. We can do some cutout. We can change how much of each of these gets through. In some cases, you want um, you want the object to stay solid, so you just bring that tone up, right? Or use this slider. To be honest, this slider here is kind of redundant. It's kind of redundant. It's not doing anything different from that, right? So I might get rid of that. It's not really doing anything. Um, I'll figure it out whether it needs to be there or not, but that's that. You've got a hue slider here, you've got these little quick colours here. If you hold down Alt and right click, you can make all the tones the same. Um, so to auto update, you can see how that changes to red. If I hold down Alt and right mouse button and drag around, I can kind of like colour pick pretty much anything in the scene and get all these different tones. And once I see what I like, I can just undo that if I want to. But you also have a little preview up here. I can add some little kind of highlights. Can change which one is giving me all that detail. There we go, there's a nice little one there. So you're getting loads of alphas out of the, the single brush. So anything black is basically the solid shape, right? So you can't really get away from that. That's why this is kind of redundant does exactly the same thing. So you barely have to use that, just leave that to zero and use this one. Right, um, so loads of little highlights in there, or whatever, you know, and that works with all your brushes. If you don't see your brush, it's probably because it's too dark. Um, so this one, branch two, it's like completely transparent. So what you might wanna do is just click reset plop that down, do the auto update and see, you know, why would that disappear on me? It doesn't have a lot of these tones in there. You see how right clicking also sets all of these. You can do alt and right click to make them all the same, but you can also right click. It doesn't work for everything in here. It works for this panel. It works for if you've changed one of the colors and you right click it, it changes them all. See how that changes those two. So it's a bit fiddly, but once you get used to it, it's fine. Right, uh, let's just undo that. Let's see, so you've got your rotational range here for 
when you click your brush down how much rotation is going to be added to it. You can see how that's just a little bit there. You've got some color range which is going to try and color tone your brush. It's not really doing anything because Because why? Uh, it's not really doing what I expect. I think I may have broken that because I fixed that recently. At least I thought I did. This color range doesn't really work. Right, so I'll figure that out soon. Um, yeah totally doesn't work correctly. So just do a control backspace here. So forget about the color range right now. Uh, other things, when you make your document and you export it, it's gonna export it as HD resolution, unless if you're in one of the pixel modes, it's gonna give you 1280 by 800, because that's just how it works with these modes. Um, but otherwise it'll give you HD resolution or it will give you two times HD resolution and three times HD and this isn't just a simple upscaling it, it looks at each brush that you plotted down and it scales them up two or three times correctly um, in some cases if the brush is very small and you scale it up beyond its capacity it basically gets kind of pixelated but the brushes are fairly big made like I've made them fairly high resolution. If I was to click this um, button here, that's going to reset the... Well, that shouldn't go to 10, should only go to 1. If I hold down control and um, mouse wheel up until the scale is 1, that's the actual size the brush was made at. All right, and you can do some nice little patterns and things with that. Um, yeah, make up your own little assets, grab your own little brushes, blah, 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 blah. bring that back to the original color, really want that color range to work, it worked before but I've ch obviously changed something, I think I've switched something off somewhere and forgot about it, um, the random amount, you can see what happens there. I really want that to work. Okay, it's not gonna work. I'll need to I'll need to drop it. <laughs> um let's say I wanted to make this little bunch look like pixel art, so I'm gonna plop it down and then switch this to pixel mode. I'm gonna turn off the CRT effect just because it plays havoc with the the screen compression um, I'm going to switch on the brush mode so you can see how this kind of switches through these little pixel modes I recommend playing around with these they're really cool I really like the Commodore one and you've got your other range your other images your pixel blendings just they'll give you slightly different tonal ranges and effects um, you can't essentially grab what you see here because it's a shader because all you're grabbing is that but you save the image out like this so when you go to file uh, export image it's going to give you exactly what you see and if you've got the CRT effect it will give you that as well it's quite handy if you want to bring this back in later you would, you would uh, export your image just uh, put it desktop here blah, 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 blah. And then you can load that back in as an image itself. Just let that do it. It's kind of crashing out. Ooh, something going on. Hold on, get the blue wheel of death. Just thinking about it. There we go. So I just name it as test. Ah. Right, and if I was to clear everything, control backspace, clear everything, I can actually plot this down the right size if I click this. Right, see this one here plots at the full size. 
Now it's not clear what all of this does, right? It's not clear. Let's turn the pixel mode off. You can see, so I've got the pixel mode. So if I scale that down and I click this one, it's actually gonna reset the scale to one, but for some reason this is giving me a really false reading. And I've not seen that before, but if you hold down control and go down and up, you get scale one, scale two, let's turn off the wrap mode. Yeah, let's reset that. Yeah, it's giving me a bit of a weird value. Interesting. Oh, I click uh, four scale. There we go, 1.5. So if you click on four, uh, four scale, it's not gonna uh, overshoot the scale. It'll make the scale correct to fit in the view, right? Bit of a quirky thing. But if you just wanna plot it down, just click that one uh, to the right, the bottom right, and that plots it down to fit inside the scene, right? regardless of four scale being on or not, it works. Every time you click it, it's like you plotting down so so if you undo it you can see it's loads of them so just click it once um i'll fix this color range thing soon so these are the output document sizes um you've got your undo and redo here uh if you undo these two and i go to a different layer let's go to a layer underneath and i click redo in layer it's going to redo in the layer, which is Control Alt Z, so Control Z undoes, Control Shift Z redoes, and Control Z undoes, and Control Alt Z redoes in the layer. So you can kind of change where something was. So you can go back in time, back into history, and do all this, undo them all, go to a layer underneath, and Control Alt Z. And basically, I put them all underneath there. The only way you see that is to make these. or switch them off with a little eye or hold down uh, alt and click and you'll get all the eyes disappear and then we can switch on wherever I put them here Let's just left click and right click these to reset the names and layers. So I reset the all the names by right clicking and a, a left click tells you up the top there. Left click resets all their opacities. Let's just click this one so you can see everything. Let's unhide all, control click. Let's try that again actually because I, I, I think I got confused what I did. So if you draw loads of plots here and we draw loads here and I want this lot to be on top, I can either cut and paste, right? And let's say I want to put all those back. I can do undo. Let's say I want to move just half of this chain back, right? I want to make it look like it's going behind these. So I've undone to there, and then I'm going to go to 14, and then control alt z Just hold that down, and now it looks like it's gone behind. So some there, some there, some there. And I can do the preview thing to see new colors. With those. If I'm happy, I click bake. I can change the opacity of everything in that layer. I can turn the layer off. Okay, let's see what else we might have missed. So just to control backspace. So we've got this little image. I'm just gonna bring it back to original color. And uh, down here we can do rotation. So this rotates 90, uh, 45 degrees. So every time you click it, we can do that. X can then, sorry, Y would then flip it that way. X that way, we can get a little symmetrical image here. Oops, I'm doing a scale thing with the Wacom tablet. Uh, 
a cool thing you can do actually if I wanted to get exactly the same details as that I click on plot fetching and then undo and I've basically got that same brush again everything about it so click that down press Y and then I can click that there I've got this nice little I know it's like a Chinese what we call them wallpaper um, this one shows me all the plots that I've made so far right up to the current undo so I can undo and then click that it only shows me up to the current undo but it also remembers these right and to see all of them I click this one it says do you want to see everything it's shooting including ones in memory yes so you see even more right so even though I've undone them they still exist because I can redo them control alt z so there's a lot of stuff can still exist in memory if you go back in time after making stuff and you want to do something completely different so some branches right so I've overwritten a lot of that memory I can click that see if there's anything excess nope right so control backspace so there's rotation stuff that's normal rotation 90 degree rotation this is your scale so instead of scaling with the mouse wheel or the bracket keys then you can scale with these you can't you can't really see any feedback in this right oops so big uh, I think it scaled up pretty fast Um, I think it's yeah it goes slower if you hold down shift and faster if you hold down control just like it does with them um, the bracket keys or the mouse wheel okay so I click that down now auto update I think it doesn't work with this I'd be surprised if it does in fact that might be a cool feature to have it also update the scale I'm gonna I'm gonna integrate that and and rotation that's good for just in it if you've got auto update on I don't think that's impossible okay I could probably do that um, but it's easier just to like undo with plot fetching now I say undo with plot fetching because let's say you've got different colours you've used for things right, let's bring in some new colours there let's plop that down let's I'll just turn auto update off right let's just get these colors let's get these colors get these colors right and let's say I want to change most of this like I've done all these colors wrong I want them to be this green so with plot fetching active it gets a lot it kind of grabs it's like it it's like it grabs it see that and then I can actually do control alt z control z right and I've got this now if I want every future brush to be the right colour I think I can do auto update and redo no, it, it grabs it, it grabs the last colour right so I need to undo that, redo auto update, redo ah, it's not doing it right anyway so I've just bulged that up <laughs> I'm trying to show you something so I make a whole bunch of these, right? And I do a different color. And I do another different color. And I want them all to be this green color, but I've kind of lost track of it. Like I might have customized it, I've not stored it. Then I can use the plot fetching to get that right thing, right? That right brush. And I've got all the colors from that. And then I want to store those colors. Oh, turn that again store the colors so right click to store the colors then I'm going to redo 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 so every time I'm, I'm plot fetching do an auto update and left click and grab the colors redo auto update grab the colors redo auto update grab the colors now there's an alternative way to do this right if everything's in that same layer and I've grabbed one of the, the plot colors all I have to do is do the preview mode left click the color grab and they'll all change and then bake them right so you can you can do it that way as well 
fiddly stuff. Now, this is all kind of like me engineering new ideas all the time, so things just seem very organic and a bit weird, and it's all very new territory. It's not it's not going to be like Photoshop or like that, so don't expect it to work in any sort of familiar sense. Um, it is different. So, yeah, that covers a lot of that stuff. Um, cut and pasting into layers, that all makes sense. Baking your layers down, uh, sorry, baking your, your colors. Uh, merging, grabbing your new brush. Give it a new name, new brush. That's now you got this. It's affected by the shader, so the colors of the original, i.e. that's now the original colors. That's why you use the, the color system when you're making these brushes, so it's easier to customize. Now, most of this is green. It's only really going to be affected by green when you bring in the shader. So a lot of the green tones are going to change. If I make all of these kind of black with Alt and right click, you can see that it's mostly going to be the green tones that change. So control backspace. I'm going to plop that down, auto update and show you like so red tones, there wasn't that many red tones in it. Blue tones, yeah, there might have been, so we get a little bit of that. And then the base tones is just the dark ones. But really, we're getting affected by this third color because the original color is mostly green and a little bit of blue. Right, so that's why you want to use that kind of system when you're making your brushes. Now, if you do did want to make a custom brush, this looks quite scary actually. If you did want to make a custom brush, uh, what you want to do is right Alt and right click to get all blue. I'm going to turn off the, let's just do new color, right? Put that down and you want to take some areas away. Well, just Alt, right click to go black. Now black is going to be your eraser here. You have to think of this in a weird way because of the way the shader works. If I want to take some chunks out of this, I'm going to draw with black, right? I'm going to get something quite random here. You'll see what happens in a second. So I'm using blue and black, two of the sort of primary colors that the shader uses. Then I'm going to grab this, call it demo, control and backspace, clear everything off. Right, and I've got everything there. Let's go back to the original colors. That's what I captured. Let's plop that down there and let's do auto update and I bring in the new shader. Let's left click to get some of these tones. So the blue tones is what we're using there and the black tones is what we're using there. So we, we can change the two tones of these, but let's say I want the black to completely disappear. Just bring that slider down but it actually subtracts. So that's a good way, it's a good way of using that. So black is basically your eraser, is what I'm saying. Black is the eraser, right? And you can change the blurriness, the cutout amount if you want it to be stronger. But anything that I made as black tones and I take all those tones out, because we're in this clear mode, becomes the eraser. So that's kind of like where that slider comes in is you know, but it's, it's more or less the same as doing that, right? That's clear, that's solid for the base. This is redundant, I need to get rid of it. Right, so now I've got that, I can continue making up new brushes. So control and backspace, let's make everything blue again. So I might want that, then I'm gonna alt right click to get everything, oops, just turn off auto update. Get everything red. Let's make this sky um, black so we can see what we're doing. So now we've got some red tones. And then green tones, so alt and right click. Now we've got some green tones. Right, and I basically have a brush that's three different brushes, three different textures. So I'm just gonna grab that. I call this new mix or something, no matter what you call it, right? Control backspace, everything's gone green because the shader's in full effect. When I bring it to original color, we see that. Let's just press I to turn off the background so we can see the transparency. And I click that down, I click auto update, 
and now I've got control of whether I see anything that was blue, anything that was red, and I'm left with just green, right? And then just red and just blue, right? But if I bring in this, I can change the colors of them. So I'm going to left click to recall all that. Now all the blue turns this color, all the red turns that color, and all the green turns this color, right? So control backspace, let's press I to bring in the background again. And we've got this three tone brush. Now if I've got uh, auto random on, we're going to get shuffles of all these different tones. So every time I click down, I'm going to get a mix of what I just showed you. Right. And if I want it to stay solid, just bring in the solid mode or use the, the base tones, right? So there's always going to be a base tone and I can even change that to whatever I want, right? So that's probably better. So control backspace, let's change the sky to something nice. Let's go for that. And let's change these to some nice greens. Let's do even brighter greens than that. Let's recall this one. And I can just start clicking these in. Let's bring on random scale, random flip X, and also a little bit of rotational range. And I've got a kind of little shrub making brush here. Let's grab that one. Let's grab this one. Let's change the tones ourselves. So I can see what's gonna happen up here. Let's bring more uh, cut out to that so we get even more reduction. Let's take away some of the base. really bring that cut out up and bring the opacity down by pressing one two three four or five and we get this more kind of vague effect so pressing two i get very little i need to reduce something or introduce a bit more there or a bit more solidness or do it the this way there we go hold down shift and you'll get loads of those press W or wrap mode right all very nice now there is some other features that are a bit advanced up here there is the scroll layer only scroller mode shifting so shifting basically if you're in layer 13 and you put something in layer 12 and you put something in layer 11 and you click shifting what you're gonna get is when you hold down the right mouse button, as you can sort of shift things around, right? If I turn that off, it does that. Now, there's also parallax mode. With parallax mode on, you'll get a separation between the layers. Now, I need to see that a bit better. You just mouse wheel up over that. I think it is parallax power P. And I think you press shift and P. Yeah, shift and P. It goes up to 40. Now you can just see it up the top of the menu here. So up to 40. Now to see even better, I can separate these layers out. So I can cut, paste, because it's based on layers as well. So cut and then paste. So you can really see that now, the parallax effect. Now that's just cool for visualizing different layers. If you're going to use different layers here and you want to export them as separate layers, that's a good way of visualizing it in a game. Now, even better than that, if I turn off parallax mode and put on scroller mode, I can see how it looks if it was kind of scrolling in front of me. You can mouse wheel over that to speed it up, mouse wheel down to slow it down. Okay, so with that plus shifting, if I hold down the right mouse button and get this really weird trippy parallax effect, that plus parallax mode, yeah, it becomes even more kind of bizarre and I'm going to turn off the shifting turn off the yeah and that gives us kind of uh, an idea of that turn off the scroller mode now you can also scroll layer only and that only happens to the current layer you have selected and that can be handy for if you just want something to pass by like a bird 
won't be animated, but it's just a nice way, like maybe dust or something, to sort of show off your image. Um, so these are just like extra features. So turn off scroller mode, uh, turn off parallax mode. Okay, so you've got that. Um, let's see, we've also got this 3D distort mode. You click this. Okay, let's turn down the blurriness. Let's turn off auto random. Oh, why it looks so pale. No cut out. The wild it looks so pale, maybe something's faint. Anyway, um let's just toggle that off and on again. It shouldn't look like that. I don't know why it's looking so faint. But what you want to do now is use the field of view and your tilt, but you can also like choose any brush that you've made. There's a reason why this is looking so faint. Let's just right click get all these. Oh yeah, press, bring this up to 100%. Right, that's your opacity or press zero. Right, but what you can do is you can distort. You can also rotate field of view. So it's kind of, this is like your distorter right and mouse wheel down as long as long as it fits in the screen as long as it fits in the screen I'm just pressing B to hide the brush by the way and that's there and rotate with E and R you can flip it with Z you can flip Y you can flip X I can do some stuff with that and once you're happy with that, you just click Capture 3D and it gives you, I think it's broken. There's something wrong with it where it's not captured exactly what we see. So I need to figure that out. Um, but it's, it's a new feature, fairly new feature. Um, auto range reset is basically going to reset any ranges when you're doing capturing. Flip rotation, no background. Um, pixel modes so the pixel modes are cool as you've seen so if I put some of these down and bring in the pixel mode you got the CRT effect this is the Commodore one you've got your dither range your dither images it's just good fun to mess around with these to be honest so it's these four here and the checkbox preview new colors is for whether you want to see uh, when you pre uh, hover over these, you want to see the new shader applied to the preview down the right, or the original color that they were made with. So that's what that's for. Uh, reset layers, opacity, name, left click, right click. So if I do give this a name, and I want to reset all the layer, the layer names, I just right click up here, that resets them. If I've got opacities, in there I just left click up here and that resets all the opacities of all the layers um, to load a brush you just choose a slot left click it you can find any image at all it uses the name of the brush and you know you can plop that down uh, to get rid of it you right click if you have got rid of it and you're using it in your project if you try to if you save this file and it doesn't have that brush. I'll show you what happens. So if I do save background design file and just call this test and I do control backspace and I load it, open, uh, where did it go? Test and I load it. It actually loaded in because it's still in memory, but if I if I was to stop the software and restart it like this, so F6 is going to restart that, and I try to open that file, I'm either going to get a crash. I don't know why it's still, that's weird. I, it's still loading it for some reason, it's still in memory. Um, so I'm pretty sure if I restarted that whole thing, it wouldn't be able to find that file. And... Yeah, that's pretty bizarre because it doesn't exist here. 
right, I'll come out of the software completely, not just a soft reset, just to make sure that I'm not I'm not kidding you guys. So I just want to check that out one more time because it shouldn't find that file. So don't be fooled because you might come back later and think, why does my image look different? There we go. So it's no longer it's not found those images, so it doesn't bother to draw them. Um, in fact, they are still there in terms of the undo. It still thinks they're there, right? But it's not drawing them. Now, if I was to put something in place of that, I wonder, let's see this one, and then undo and redo. It still doesn't recognize them. Okay, let's try that one. Just checking for a bug here. Still doesn't see them. It still thinks they exist. So if you were to look at the file, now if you did want to look at the file, you have to kind of understand what it does. <laughs> um, but it's kind of like mad science. Uh, it just uses like a whole lot of reference to the brush names and the plot positions. And yeah, it's massive big array of numbers and doesn't make any sense. Uh, to you guys, but to me it does. But if you did look at the file, it would be looking for uh, this particular brush, either by name or the the slot that it was in, and it would be you know position and rotation, scale, and all that information that it needed about that brush. Like, did it use any of the shaders? What colors did it use, and so on. Um, but that pretty much covers everything. There is some bugs that need fixed to do with the. The distort view, uh, this you know the the three D distort mode isn't working correctly. Remember, so it's affected by opacity. Uh, I'd rather it kind of not be, uh, but you can tilt this and change the field of view, scale down, and then click capture three D. But for some reason, it's it's flipped it, uh, which seems to be what's happening. So. Let's just do it that way, scale down and do capture 3D. Yeah, it's flipped it that way. So there is a weird flipping going on here um, where it's flipping it round. So I can imagine that's going to be the opposite we're going to get. So yeah, there's the bug with that. It's definitely doing some weird rotation on this. So there's a bug with that, and there's a bug with the color range. Um, it should, oh, it's working now. You see how it's doing some different tones? So it only works when you've got a bit of this on. And I'm really curious to why it didn't work earlier. Which beats me, maybe it was just the kind of brush that it was. Let's try it on demo here. Let's, uh, yeah, that seems to be working now. So that's what that's supposed to do is introduce a whole lot of kind of color mixes. So based on the range, we get a little bit of tonal difference and it's kind of at random completely. You, can't, you don't have control of what it do, does yet. Um, yeah, that is pretty much everything in the bag with this version. Uh, so this is version 1.25. It's got a timer. If you left click the timer, you can pause it. And it actually tells you there. And you right click, you can reset it. You got your plot memory. In actual fact, uh, there is an allowance of 2048 plots. You can barely see it down here, but it says how many plots you've used. And if you do run it at plots, it will just ask you to merge everything. But every now and again, you can merge and that will free up your memory. It turns all of the merge stuff into a new brush. So that's kind of handy. So it automatically captures the brush for you. Put that back to original colors and you can like totally make up assets this way. You can make up bits for your background. You, you can, you know, Make some background trees and stuff here. Flip that horizontally, you know, and that's going to be your background. Remember that little bit we made here? We can actually plot that down. Make some grass, 
You've got some little flowers you can add to. I'm just kind of like doing random stuff. Um, you know, we've got our little weird tree. Uh, flip that like that. Let's make right click to get everything black. Uh, make that full opaque. Bring in the shader. Press 5 for a shadow type effect. Let's throw in a shadow under this. Two, three, I'm pressing the number of keys at the top. Two, three, four, five, three. And do a little shadow. Ah, you can go ahead and change the sky. Make some really on ominous images like this one, kind of trippy. And put it into the pixel mode. Turn off the CRT. I like this one. I really like this C64 V2. It's meant to be an extended Commodore, like a next generation. Um, and just mess around with these. Change the sky color. Change the, to the range and the image. Let's mess around with these, uh, the quick call. Um, you got your te texture filter here as well. If you want to see that on or off. It's, it's kind of better with the off because when it's on you get these darker pixels around the edges just because of the, the crappy blending but um, anything you make you can pop in to the discord forum uh, that uh, you'll find that through the itch page so if you go to the info and go to the itch site that'll pop up and take you to all my products so there's backdrop designer there there's a free demo which is about three versions behind and basically you get most of the features you just can't save uh, backdrop design files and you can only export at HD size not extra HD in fact you can't even export files you can you can capture brushes and you can merge layers so you kind of get you get just 1280 by 800 resolution from that so it's just that um, you still make loads of assets with it anything like these so these were made in backdrop designer um, so you can go to the discord it should be active we've beamed you into the discord and that will take you to backdrop designer um, lovely stuff so i hope you enjoy using it i hope that covers everything or oh, remember delete and plot gets rid of a plot forever so you can go back in time and let's say i want to get rid of these delete 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 and then i'm going to do Control shift z basically just i've truncated those completely out of memory let's add some little trees just to finish this off i do have some nice trees here somewhere we've got some flowers as well in fact, if you bring in the shader for these, let's just, yeah, in fact, let's do no shader. Got some little roses. Make sure you understand the scale of things. If you put something that big in the distance, it's going to look like a monster flower and mess up the scale of everything. A rose is going to look small, far away. In fact, this brings me to this. So if I put an eye level factor, an eye level adjust, you'll see this automatically gets small and big based on this little line here. If I change that position just to this horizon line, I've now got little flowers that I can put down and as I come forward, they get bigger. So you've got instant perspective. Let's do a little bit of color range and let's make all this a bit darker. Let's do auto random. Let's keep it solid, yeah. Let's turn down the color range a bit. Uh, we just want a little bit of darkness. Let's do flip scale and random. Let's do some random rotational range. Yeah, we got loads of little flowers. Let's bring in our pixel mode. Change that to the range. Cool stuff, right? CRT.
So the only thing that the demo limits you is that you can't really save out the, the CRT mode. You'd have to screen capture that. Um, you can merge. Yeah, for even the pixel modes, you can't save that out. You'd have to screen capture it. So the demo mode's free, but you definitely make something with the demo and post your work. It'll look a little bit different from this. The arrangement of the setup will be different. I think the rotation in the color was up here somewhere and I've changed the order of these. Um, I've got some nice trees in here that I made as well. I'm just trying to find those. There's also a whole lot of um, stuff that I've made that I've included. There we go, some trees. Scale these up. Mm. See how that's affected by the perspective as well, which is really nice. So you can change that. Uh, the eye level factor is how much it's going to scale up and down. Eye level adjust is going to change anything that was already using eye level factor, and the position is going to change that as well. So you can always make little adjustments to these. Look at that. Ooh, flowers in bloom. And I'm going to put little trees in. Oops, remember to turn off certain things. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up. For this guys I hope you enjoy using this tool I'd love to see what you make jump on the discord or post it in any forum where you can post artwork and you know help get the name around uh, backdrop designer is a cool tool for making scrollable tileable backgrounds as well as single assets single assets because as you can see you can capture brushes and make whatever you like and it's a super cool tool a lot different from Photoshop or what you might be used to. Oh, another cool thing is if you press tab, it's going to sample the colors underneath the cursor. It's affected by scale. So it's small there you go. You see this little flashing color there. Uh, let's just reset all that. Oh, reset. And you can then press zero. Let's bring all that in. Why is that still? Let's bring all that. Uh, and I'll leave with some opacity or something. Just looks really faint. Is there a blur on that? I think it's just a really low quality image. Yeah. Just looks like it's got opacity. Let's bring out some cut out mount. Zero. I think it's just got opacity. Yeah. So eye level factor position, you can change these that were affected by this eye level factor in the first place. So that affects anything that you plot down. You see when I turn it off, it doesn't get affected. It will be affected in the future as well. If you've used that, it's going to be affected by these. Right? If you don't use it, it's not going to be affected by uh, these. Right? So by default, it's off. But it's a cool little supplement to help rescale stuff. <laughs> Loads of power in this little tool. Uh, very confusing to start with. It will take you maybe a couple of weeks to get used to, like anything else out there. You know, nobody learnt Photoshop in a day. Nobody learnt ZBrush in a week. You know, and there's a lot of other tools. Nobody learnt Blender in a month. So you know, give it a couple of days. I'd love to see what you make and share your work look how cool that looks you know with the different pixel modes thanks for watching the stream guys now it's time to go and get lunch so i'll catch you guys later thanks for watching bye